If you like this video please give a thumbs up and subscribe. Hit the bell icon to be notified of new videos. Captain Thomas Mantle chased a UFO over Franklin, Kentucky. Captain Mantle tried to intercept the UFO when he began a spiraling, climbing turn to 220 degrees and 15,000 feet. Some months after Kenneth Arnold, on June 24, 1947, while flying near Mount Rainier in Washington state, claimed to have seen nine flying saucers, or the allegedly Roswell UFO crash, similar characteristics are described in Kentucky and Ohio. Was Thomas Mantella World War II veteran, Captain Thomas Francis Mantle Jr. was born on 30 June 1922. He graduated from Mail High School in Louisville. On 16 June 1942, Mantle joined the U.S. Army Air Corps, finishing flight school on 30 June 1943. During World War II, he was assigned to the 440th Troop Carrier Group which airdropped the 101st Airborne Division into Normandy, France on 6 June 1944. For the Normandy landings, he earned the Distinguished Flying Cross for courageous action during the mission. Mantle returned to Louisville, after the war and decided not to leave his military career, by joining the newly formed Kentucky Air National Guard, in 1947. The final hours of Thomas Mantle on January 7, 1948, right after lunch hour, around 1.30 p.m. The Kentucky State Police received some unusual reports. Concerned citizens reported an unidentified flying object near Maysville, Kentucky. In a short time, more reports came from other areas, Irvington and Owensboro. Inside the Godman Army Airfield's control tower at Fort Knox, Sergeant Quinton Blackwell, and other two people spotted a large, metallic flying craft. For about an hour and 25 minutes, dozens of people, including Colonel Hicks, watched as the UFO seemed to hang motionless in the southwestern sky. Colonel Guy Hicks, the base commander, described it as, about one-fourth the size of the full moon, and, it was white and looked like an umbrella. Also, the UFO was round, whitish in color, with a red light toward its bottom side, and seemed to be moving slowly toward the south. Captain Thomas Mantle UFO incident at 2.50 p.m., the situation suddenly changed. Captain Mantle was leading a flight of 4, 4, P-51 aircraft on a flight from Marietta Air Base, Marietta, Georgia, to Standerford Field in Louisville, Kentucky. The Godman Field Control Tower requested to identify an object in the sky if the mission would permit. Captain Mantle replied that his mission was ferrying aircraft and that he would attempt to identify. The flight of F-51 Mustang fighters flew over Godman Army Airfield. One pilot left the flight as the climb began, because of shortness of fuel. Mantle replied that he was merely ferrying the aircraft but that he would attempt an intercept. As he reached 15,000 feet, Mantle radioed the tower. The records are also confusing about the altitude that various pilots reached. Clearly, Mantle and two of his wingmen, Lieutenant A. W. Clements, and Lieutenant B. A. Hammond reached 15,000 feet. Some of the documentation suggests that all three aircraft reached 22,000 feet. By there, the two wingmen turned back. Hammond radioed that they abandoned the interception. Documents state that only Lieutenant Clements was equipped with an oxygen mask. Thomas Mantle's last messages 3.10 p.m. Mantle was the only pilot left chasing the object, and he was alone at 23,000 feet. He was still climbing toward the UFO when he saw for the last time but made no more radio calls to either his wingmen or the control tower at Godman. By 3.15, everyone had lost both radio and visual contact with him. Captain Thomas Mantle's official radio conversations radio conversation between control at Godman and NG-869 essentially as follows, Colonel Hicks's account. NG-869, object traveling at 180 miles per hour, half my speed. Lieutenant Orner's account. NG-869, high and traveling about one half my speed at 12 o'clock position. Later, Closing in to take a good look, no further word was heard by Orna. T. Sergeant Quinton A. Blackwell, NG-869, at 1445. Object traveling at 180 miles per hour directly ahead and above me now and moving at about one half my speed. Later, I'm trying to close in for a better look, at 15,000 feet. Object directly ahead of and above me now and moving about one half my speed. 
It appears to be metallic of tremendous size. I'm trying to close in for a better look, no other word was heard by Blackwell from NG869. Captain Gary W. Carter, NG869, object going up and forward as fast as he was, approximately 360 miles per hour, going to 20,000 feet and if no closer will abandon the chase. No further contact was heard by Captain Carter. Apparently, the last word ever received from NG869, Thomas Mantle's crash investigations 5 p.m. The remains of AP-51 were found on a farm near Franklin, Kentucky. For over an estimate of six-tenths of a mile, from the center point of the wreckage, pieces of the aircraft landed on the ground. The parts scattered north to south. The report says Thomas Mantle's body was found in the broken cockpit, his watch had stopped at 3.18 p.m. An accident investigation began immediately, as by regulation. Since the canopy lock was in place after the crash, they assumed that Captain Mantle did not attempt to abandon the aircraft. The consensus is that Captain Mantle lost consciousness at approximately 25,000 feet. Within 48 hours, Air Force investigators collected statements from the military witnesses who had been in Godman Tower on January 7. Thomas Mantle's UFO investigation A small number of theories emerged before and after the official investigation. Venus based on the object's direction and time of day, Air National Guard investigators affirmed the planet Venus would be in the sky position. According to the astronomical charts, available Venus could be seen in the daylight sky in the approximate location of the UFO. Weather balloon in 1952, a magazine wanted to print an article about how spectacular UFO sightings could be explained through proper research and investigation. High-ranking Air Force officers assured the magazine editors that Thomas Mantle had chased Venus, in a move that was sure to anger the reporter and the magazine editor, a week after the magazine was published, the Air Force released a new answer. Mantle had chased a balloon. Donald Kehoe, who investigated the Thomas Mantle incident, suggested in his 1950 book, The Flying Sources Are Real, reported that to fly the 90 miles from Madisonville to Fort Knox in 30 minutes, a balloon would require a wind of 180 miles per hour. To them, come to a complete stop and speed up to 360 miles per hour to keep ahead of Captain Mantle. The truth about Thomas Mantle this captain said that Mantle's body was never found. The UFO removed Thomas Mantle from the airplane before it crashes. On the other hand, has affidavits and horrific descriptions confirming the body inside the cockpit remains. Jenny Randalls and T. Scott Crane Jr. reported both in the 80s to have information that Mantle's wingman, 2nd Lieutenant Buford Hammond, saw the UFO release a beam that struck Mantle's P-51. Again witness on the ground watched at the aircraft began its spiraling dive, and watched as it broke up in midair. According to Coral Lorenz, USAF Reserve Captain claimed he took part in the incident investigation. Thomas Mantle's UFO returns and landed on that same evening, three hours after Mantle had crashed, three witnesses at Lockbourne Air Base near Columbus, Ohio, watched an object seem to land. These witnesses were civilian air traffic control at Lockbourne on that same January 7, 1948. Albert R. Pickering, at about 7.25 p.m., observed down a big round red object through the overcast. The tower called to confirm the presence of a UFO and then called the airways operator, Frank Isiel, and the captain and meteorologist that night, Charles E. McGee. They came to the door. The UFO hovered with no sound, almost stationary in the air. After five minutes without moving, the unidentified flying object makes a circle of the entire base. The thing came back and stopped instantly, it didn't slow down. It stopped as it runs into a wall. The object then landed in between Pickering and the base's fence. It was staying down for about 10 seconds. Then climbed at a very fast speed to its original altitude, about 10,000 feet, leveling off and disappearing into the overcast. This UFO remained visible for the witness for about 20 minutes. Albert R. Pickering's observations were confirmed by other members of the civilian crew, including the tower operator, Alex A. Boudreau, who reported, also on January 14, 1948. On the 29th of September 2001, the Simpson County Historical Society unveiled a historical marker in honor of Thomas Mantle in his hometown of Franklin.